Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, this is part six of my Dragonflight series, and we are going to be talking all about gathering professions. Now, if you guys have seen the first part of this series, we are basically taking that same type of format, but we will be applying it to the three primary gathering professions. So if you are somebody interested in the basics of gathering in Dragonflight, how it looks like, how to gain skill, how to make gold, you know, what do all these different bonuses mean, all of that, this is going to be the video for you. As always, if you guys are a new viewer of the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And if you are a returner, thank you so much for coming by again. And as always, I hope you enjoy the video as well. But we're gonna go right into this video. So up first, let's keep it pretty simple. And let's just talk about how gathering looks in Dragonflight. And actually, thankfully, this has a pretty boring answer. And what I mean by that is that it is pretty similar to just standard gathering. All the basics still apply. You will be flying around the four different zones inside of the Dragon Isles, you'll be collecting nodes or skinning mobs depending on your profession, and you'll be gaining raw materials, which you can either use to craft or you can sell them off on the auction house. Now, besides the fact that Dragonflight Gathering shares the basics with all other gathering, it does have a few twists. The big one, of course, is the flying mechanics, as we have the dragon riding, as well as the specialty mobs slash nodes that you will come across inside of the world. We will cover these in just a little bit, but it makes your gathering experience a little bit more fun. A lot of us, especially the herbalists and miners out there, are used to kind of putting on autopilot, auto-flying in a circle around a zone, and then of course picking up any nodes that you cross by. Thankfully, in Dragonflight it will be a little bit more entertaining, so hopefully you will enjoy it a little bit more. But let's get into the nitty gritty right now. And so up first, we're going to talk about gathering stats. Now one thing to note, even though these are three different stats, then the crafting stats, which is like multi-craft, inspiration, stuff like that, they still work the same. Generally they are a percentage that helps increase your chance or your rate of something happening, and you gain these stats by unlocking them in your spec tree or by equipping profession tools and accessories. For gathering, there are three main stats, and these apply to all of the three primary gathering professions. So this applies to skinning, mining, and herbalism. Up first, we have finesse. And finesse is just the percentage chance to gather more primary items. Primary items in this case simply just means the node that you are gathering or the main item that you are skinning. For example, if you come across a Draconium Deposit as a miner, that percentage of finesse will grant you more Draconium if it procs. It will not grant you any sort of extra rare material that could come out of the Draconium, like a diamond. Up next, we have Deftness, which is honestly the easiest one out of this bunch, and this is just your gathering speed. So if you have 4% Deftness, then you have a plus 4% of gathering speed. Lastly, you have perception, which is the increased ability to gain rare reagents while gathering. So I just talked about how finesse kind of increases that base item that you get. Perception it kind of focuses on the rarer items. So like I just mentioned, instead of gaining more draconium, then you have a higher chance of getting one of those very high priced diamonds from this node. So perception and finesse kind of do the opposite of each other. One is gaining the primary item, while the other one is seeking for more rare reagents. Now, moving on, we have our skill level. And thankfully, skill is a little bit more simple than your crafting professions. And really, there are just three main sources of your skill. The first one you have is your base level, which is just up to 100. So as any sort of gathering profession, in order to grant and increase your base skill, you will just go around and gather. 
So the longer you gather, ultimately the higher your base skill will become, and soon enough you will be maxed out. Now one quick difference in Dragonflight compared to your older gathering is that not all nodes guarantee a skill up. Once you hit a certain level, then your regular nodes will not grant or have a very low chance of granting skill, so you have to rely on those higher quality deposits, or flowers, or mobs to grant you that skill, but ultimately, as you gather, you will soon max it out. The second way to gain skill is through your profession accessories and your profession's tools. This works the exact same way as crafters, and just depending on the tool, you will gain a certain amount of skill or stats. Then lastly, you can gain skill from your specialization bonuses. For example, if you unlock a tier that gives plus five skill while mining, then of course you just gained plus five skill to your overall skill level. So for a quick summary, you have your base skill, you have your profession equipment, and then lastly, you have any sort of bonuses that come from your specialization trees. Now, what skill actually does is simply just increases the quality of the items you gather. For example, as a beginner, miner, skinner, or herbalist, you will likely only gather quality one items. Keep in mind, materials go all the way up to quality three. As you get a little bit more advanced, then you will mostly gather quality two, and once you finally max out and, you know, unlock some specialization points and really become a master gatherer, then you will gain the best ability of gathering, which will grant you those quality three materials. But most gatherers, if you get a bit experienced, will be gathering quality two most of the time. Now, before we go into specializations and knowledge points, let me go back to what I talked about with gathering with flavor, and let me highlight on the different types of nodes that you'll come across. So when you are gathering, and I'm going to kind of highlight real quick on mining and herbalism, there will be different types of the same deposit. So for example, as a miner, you have your general common ore, which is your servite deposits. So normally as you, you know, fly around the world, you're going to access these nodes. However, there is a chance that they can be a different or a special version of the same node. One that you guys will likely be familiar with is the rich deposit. This happens in a lot of old world mining and in Shadowlands mining or herbalism, you know, whatever gathering profession, there may be a rich node which grants you more materials when mining. These are the type of special nodes that we are talking about. But specifically in Dragonflight, there are different elemental nodes. So for example, if you are flying around a lava area, you will likely come across a molten servite deposit. Now what these elemental deposits do is grant you the base ore, so we're talking about servite ore, so it's still going to give you your normal items. However, you will also get an elemental reagent. Most of the time, you will be getting rousing items, which are these new elemental items for crafters and other professions. Now, not only do you get a special item, you also gain an effect. Now, this effect depends on if you are specialized in this, which we'll talk about in just one second, but these can help you gather more efficiently. Now, they're not always the greatest. For example, right now, if you loot molten deposits, you're going to start burning. So of course, that's not always a positive effect, but it brings some character to gathering itself. Now, a positive example is if you come across a Titan Touch deposit, then you will gain an increased speed, and you will have your secondary stats buffed by 3%. So not all of these are negative, not all of these are positive, but it does add variety to your gathering experience. Now, of course, if you are a skinner, there's not these elemental nodes that you can go and gather. However, specific mob types have a chance of dropping rare items. These rare items that are collectible are mostly used in rare crafting recipes and will be sold for a lot of gold. So instead of having these kind of elemental nodes, you have different creatures granting you rare items. And so with that out of the way, let's move on to specializations. And thankfully, 
all three professions share the same kind of breakdown. Up first, I like to call this your general tree. Now, depending on your profession, it's going to be called something different, but this tree is kind of just for your general stats and abilities. So as you gain points into this tree, you're going to unlock more skill. So you may gain some deafness, which is of course your speed of gathering. You may increase your perception or your finesse. And all of these percentage buffs will be applied to your overall profession, so not in a specific node or anything like that. Now, the thing that I want to highlight right here, which will be the most important thing for herbalists and miners, is investing your first 40 knowledge points into the beginning of this tree. If you are a miner, this node will be called the mining process, and if you are a herbalist, it will be called botany but you will want to invest your first 35 to 40 points inside of this tree. The reasoning is, is if you max out this specific node, you are going to have the ability to gather while mounted, which is huge. As you guys know, you will have to dragon ride in the dragon isles, so you cannot use a sky golem, you cannot use your druid form or anything like that. So the ability to gather as you are mounted is huge. So honestly, I think that's the best thing to specialize in at first, and that is a part of this general tree. Up next, we have our special tree, which is what I like to call. You could also call it the refining tree. And this is gaining stats, but for specific items. For example, if you are a herbalist, then you can specialize in a specific herb. You know, let's say it turns out that Bubble Poppy is the best herb of Dragonflight, then as a herbalist, you could choose to specialize in that herb to make the gathering of that specific herb a lot better. But it's that same process of gaining extra stats and skill for that specific herb. Another huge ability that comes from this special or refining tree is the actual ability to refine materials. So as you unlock this subtree, you're going to gain the ability to turn lower quality items into higher quality. So this works by a five base system. So if you have five level one quality items, you can turn it into a quality two. Then if you have five quality twos, you can turn it into a quality three. So, you know, if you are gathering as a beginner and you're getting a lot of quality ones and you're worried that they're not going to sell, as you advance through your specializations, you are able to refine that quality to sell them for a bit more gold. Then lastly, you have your elemental tree. That's at least what I like to call it. And it looks a little bit different depending on your profession, but it does the same exact thing. Those special nodes that I just talked about, or those rare materials if you're a skinner, you can specialize into those specific nodes. So if you are a miner and you really want to specialize in Titan Forge nodes, and you will just have a better time gathering those. And that is kind of how the specialization system works. I believe the most important one is, you know, gaining that mounting and gathering ability, but everything else really just depends on your playstyle. And this is where we're going to go to our last final part of this video, which is knowledge points. Of course, we've talked about how to skill up, we've talked about specializations, but it doesn't really matter if we don't know how to get the points to actually put in these specializations. So that's what we're going to talk about here. Now, I will just say, if you guys haven't seen my first specializations video and the knowledge point video, which is the second one of this series, I highly recommend it. And I'm going to leave it with the playlist in the description down below. The reason why I bring that up is a lot of the same ways that you gather crafting knowledge points is how you gather gathering knowledge points. So that's just a heads up. I'm going to cover some, you know, gathering specific ones, but some of them do overlap. Up first, we have our weekly profession quest. So you will go to Valdraken each week on your gatherer and at your specific profession trainer. So the herbalist trainer, if you're an herbalist, etc., you will be able to pick up a weekly quest. 
Most of the time, this is going to be a turn-in quest for materials. So it might be, you know, a handful of draconium ore, for example, if you're a miner. And once you turn it in, you're going to gain plus three knowledge. A huge thing to note right here is that you have to turn in at least quality two materials. So if you are a miner, kind of low level, and you are only gathering rank one or quality one, that is not gonna be able to be used towards those quests. Keep in mind, you must be level 25 in order to unlock the first version of this quest. Up next, you have your one-time bonuses. Of course, you have your one-time treasures and your one-time quests that you can come along, but you also have your first time gathering bonuses. So as a crafter, if you craft an item for the first time, you gain some knowledge. The same thing kind of applies for these gathering professions. The first time you loot a node, this can be a regular node or a special elemental node. So Titan Forged, Molten, Rich, just normal. Each time you harvest one for the first time, you will gain plus one knowledge as well as five artisan medals. So that's super awesome, works just the same way as crafting. Now the next way to gain knowledge points is kind of the huge one for gathering specifically, and this is your boundless knowledge. Now depending on your profession, it is named something different. If you are a herbalist, then you will gather dream bloom. If you are a miner, you will get iridescent ore. And if you are a skinner, you will gain curious hide. These are rare items that have a chance from being looted from any sort of node or monster, and you can only discover a certain amount per week. Currently, that amount is 6, however, it could change during the beta. But right now, you can proc 6 of these per week, and each time you gain one and learn it, you will gain plus 1 skill, as well as plus 5 artisan medals. Now, there are other rare items under this category. For example, if you are a miner, you will gain this kind of elemental stone. I was only able to gather one during my gathering time, and it currently does not have a limit on it, at least not one stated. So I can't say exactly how many of these you can get per week, or if it's a one-time thing, but that is something that can happen. Then lastly, kind of this main source, there's a few others out there, but the last main source is from the Artisan's Consortium, Vendor. So very similar to the crafting ones at a specific rep level and at a specific Artisan Metals cost, you will be able to gain plus 15 knowledge points for your gathering profession. Keep in mind the crafting is plus 10 points, but if you are a gatherer, you will gain plus 15, which is a little bit better for your money. But the huge thing to note is each time you purchase this item, it will get a little bit more expensive. The first time will be 100 artisan medals, the second time will be 200, and the third time will be 300. And there we go, that is the main sources of knowledge points when gathering. You have your one-time sources, you have your weekly quest, you have your purchasable points, as well as the gatherable points that you can get a certain amount of times per week. And with that being said, I just want to leave you guys off with a quick suggestion. A lot of people have been discussing what the best class and race to play as a gatherer, and thankfully with Dragonflight, it becomes a little bit more equal. Normally, the go-to and the go-to for Old World will forever be Druids, because Druids have the ability to instantly mount, and they don't get kicked off when herbing, etc. However, Druids lose that instant flight ability because everybody has to use the dragon riding mechanics. Meaning that Druids aren't that popular anymore, and really any class can actually gather efficiently. Now, in terms of racial bonuses, I have three main suggestions. If you guys can and you're comfortable with playing, I highly recommend the new Drakthir Evoker. They have a racial ability that gains plus 50 perception, which is that skill that increases your ability of rare reagents. So this could just be super, super handy. Now, if you don't really care about that special bonus, you're gonna get it from specialization trees anyways, then you have a few more options. 
If you are a skinner, of course, a worgen will be awesome for the increased skinning abilities, and the same thing goes with Tarin. However, the Tarin are for herbalist as they have the herbalism ability, and if you want to specialize in mining, then you have the High Mountain Torrens. So it's a little bit uneven with Horde versus Alliance, but thankfully anybody can be an evoker, and I just highly recommend going that route. At the end of the day, it truly doesn't matter that much because everybody has to be mounted. Everybody can unlock all of these kind of stat bonuses, so don't feel like you need to re-roll your class or character just to gather efficiently. But there we go, guys. I know this video was pretty long, but hopefully all of the gathering basics are now answered. Of course, if you have any questions or want to leave any sort of tips, feel free to leave it in the comments down below, and I will try my best to answer you pretty fast. Also, if you just want to let me know if you plan on gathering or not during this expansion, feel free to leave that down below as well. As always, everybody, I appreciate you so much for watching these videos, and I hope you enjoyed, and as always, everybody, have a good day.